Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about the Locker Store 10. I'm down here as you can see I'm just going to waver you a little bit here but today's video we wanted to focus on the device. This is going to be our hardware review of the Locker Store 10 available now for about 950 quid and this new 10 bay NAS from Acer Store has really shook things up. It's giving you stuff that other 8 and 10 bay NASs at this price point are just not delivering both at the end of 2019 and early 2020. In fact, this device is going to be a centerpiece of the CES 2020 show from Acer Store, I'm sure. But what is it about this device that makes it worth your data? What are the good points? What are the bad points? And does it deserve your data? Let's get straight to it and talk about the device. So, as mentioned, this is a 10 bay NAS device. I could say it's aimed at home and business users, but I'd be lying. It's, of course, largely geared towards business only. When you've got this amount of storage with each one of those bays supporting up to the very latest 16 terabyte hard drives, this is a serious amount of data. 160 terabytes of potential storage without your RAID of course and the device also arrives with two NVMe ports inside that we will be checking out in a wee while. But let's talk about some of the hardware architecture of this device. You do check out my other video of the unboxing of this which, which will show you all of the accessories you buy and more information on the software. Today we want to focus as much as possible on the hardware. So we've got our LCD panel here giving us real time information about this device. Everything from the IP of individual network ports. Can't wait to tell you about those later. On top of that you've got information about the temperature and more information about the discs and access. The whole thing is controllable with the buttons here, there's like back and select and up and down and stuff like that. And sorry, middle and around with the light too much there. And on the side, we've got LEDs denoting system access, power on, power down, LEDs for network access, and we've even got LEDs on every single one of the individual drive bays denoting health and access. We have a lovely ventilation panel built into the front of the device here, which is very subtle, as well as ventilation on every single one of those hard drive bays. If we remove one of these bays now, as mentioned on my other video, I love the fact that not only are these metal trays, but they're some of the best, most robust trays I've seen in a NAS in a very long time. And saying that about a desktop NAS is particularly impressive. The spring load on it is particularly robust as well. Anyone that's owned some of the older series NASs, and this is from any NAS brand really, will know that these springs do give out after a little while, but I can't really see these ones and the metal tray giving way too soon. The screw holes for two and a half inch and three and a half inch media. And once again, the device can be populated the very latest hard drives and it doesn't even need to be populated fully. You can partially populate this device if you so choose. So you can get away with one or two or maybe four hard drives in a RAID 5 and you can add drives later as you need them and even move up to a RAID 6. The device also has a front mounted USB copy button which means you can connect um, a USB 3 device directly to this and with that, either back up the entire content of the NAS to a USB drive or do it the other way around. And that one touch button can be set up to do a different routine, be a full backup one way or the other, or even just a differential backup, which will only back up the changes since the last backup. Um, the device itself, once again, at 950 quid will seem like quite a lot of money, but there's a lot of architecture to this device, both inside and outside, that's worthy of note. The chassis itself is metal in design and on the front, that front mounted plastic panel is one of the few bits of plastic in this device's design. The base of the device has got a metal plate there at the bottom and if we look at the rear port, we can get a little bit more information about why I was so enamored with this device last year at Computex. Now we've got the PSU here which I believe is around 250 watts and on top of that we've got these two lovely cooling fans that keep things nice and low but they will affect the noise on a metal chassis that has got two large rear ball bearing fans. Those fans can be operated automatically or manually as the user needs but obviously I would rely on the system to take care of those fans for the most part. On the side here, we're going to ignore these just for a second, we've got a USB port which, thanks to the ADM software, can be utilised in a number of ways. It can be used for dongles, both wireless and Bluetooth, as well as a myriad of compatible USB devices such as USB printers, UPSs and more, all usable with that port. But the real area of interest are these four ports. Let's start with the red ones. Now, Acer Store was the first company last year to introduce 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports as standard. Up to that point, 
most NAS devices either arrive with one GBE or you have to pay through the nose and get 10 gigabit ethernet, with one GBE being pretty much the default standard everywhere in the world. But even now in early 2020, Data is getting bigger and bigger. The speed at which we need it is getting faster and faster. And internet um, services are just getting faster all the time. Even mobile services at 5G are just better than they've ever been. The result being that 1GBE networks are just not cutting it. And even home networks and internet service providers are starting to look into devices being supplied that exceed the 1 gigabit ethernet LAN port argument. Now, 2.5 GBE is backwards compatible with 1 GBE and you can utilize 2.5 GBE on the majority of 10 gigabit Ethernet devices. On top of that, these ports can be link aggregated, which means two 2.5 GBE ports with the right switch become 5 gigabit Ethernet. And 5 gigabit Ethernet can be used for editing uh, photos and video. It can be utilized for Steam game libraries. It can be used for a myriad of things but it's still only five gigabit ethernet, which is great in link aggregation, but what else do they bring into the table? I tell you, they give you two 10 GBE ports as well. This is cool. This is why when I first saw this device last year, I was impressed because this level of access, particularly at this price point at 950, which seems a lot of money, is un heard of because remember you've got the nvme slots inside here along with those 10 bays of storage so with caching you are going to get great great speeds on top of that with these ports and 950 quid for this 10 bay not only is this cheaper than its nearest rivals which would be the um ds2419 from synology which is around 11 to 1200 pounds or the qnap the ts873e this arrives cheaper than both and both of those NASs are 1 GBE only, and both of those NASs are 8 bays. This is a 10 bay with NVMe, which is something the other ones haven't got, and 4 LAN ports of unparalleled connectivity. This device is impressive in that regard. However, it's not all good. As I mentioned in my unboxing video, there are things that leave me a little, a little disappointed. And one of them is the CPU of choice. I understand this is a business NAS, and with applications covering things like surveillance with surveillance center with media applications in looks good and sounds good and you've got backup strategies and btrf support on this device coming out of the wazoo you're thinking everything's great and when you see these ports you go link aggregation eh? 10 plus another 10 is 20 plus 2.5 plus 2.5 woohoo i've got a link aggregated potential of 25 G uh, gbe 2500 megs woohoo wee Waha! But it's not as straightforward as that. Even though this device arrives with 8 gig of DDR4 memory that can be upgraded to 32 gig, that CPU is just not capable of all of these link aggregated together. If you wanted those kind of speeds, you would have to look at an i3 or an i5 minimum. And because of that, that leaves this device in a slight quandary for me, because I do like it. I like ADM as a software, and it's got everything I need as a business user for robust storage. Even if it is slightly more geared towards third-party apps than first, there's still a great selection of first-party apps readily available. But there's no avoiding the simple fact that I want to know that if I can link aggregate these, I want a CPU that can do that. If I connect via one, one of these 10 GBE ports, and I fully populate this device with traditional hard drives, I'm going to get great speeds. If I use um, the M NVMe slots inside here with some standard hard drives, I'm going to get that 1,000 megs, no problem. Even link aggregating these two, I'm going to get my 400 plus megs with these link aggregated without worrying too much about it. But if I link aggregate these two to try to ca get over 200, thousand megabytes per second read and write i am going to struggle on this device and that's because of that cpu even if i fully populated this with 7200 rpm um, enterprise level drives such as the new wd reds that have got 512 meg cache and 7200 rpm i could fully populate this with 10 of those and put in two Samsung Pro NVMe SSDs, the 970s, inside this for read-write caching. On the face of it, 
that should be enough. And I've got the output as well. I've got the ability to reach that level. But ultimately, that CPU will serve as a little bit of a bottleneck. Not a lot. Because, let's face it, I'm still going to have to rely on hard drives to a degree. Maybe if I fully populated this with SSDs, then maybe I'd hit that level. But there's still no avoiding the fact that an Intel Atom CPU is looking a little long in the tooth. And I criticise um, Asus Store for this as much as I criticise Synology and QNAP for this. I think we need to let the Atom CPU die. It's a great file handling CPU but it's had its time in the sun and there are better processors out there. That said, this device, despite that, can still be utilized fantastically well with these ports individually. And if you don't plan on link aggregating these two 10 GBE ports or you plan on editing directly on this device via two separate 10 GBE connected Macs or Windows systems, or if you're gonna connect this device via link aggregation, to a 10 GBU supported switch with multiple 1, 2.5 and 5 GB connected users, this is the dogs. This is going to be fantastic for that. But if you're one of those users that wants to lag directly into this for photo video editing and editing raw footage, you may come away slightly disappointed if you were planning on relying on link aggregation on those ports. But before we wrap this up, let's take a look inside this device and have a look at those NVMe slots. Let's fast forward to the removing of the top of this chassis. Right, so here we are on the inside of the Acer Store chassis. Straight away, if we lift this flap up down here, we can see that DDR4 8 gig memory module. There's also space for another memory module just over here underneath this heat sink panel here. Now, the device itself has got the CPU and everything you need underneath there, but for the sake of the heat sink and, of course, the thermal paste around there, I'm not going to be lifting that panel up. There hopefully will be some photos at the NAS Compare article. Now, if we look at the base of this device, we can take a look at those NVMe slots. If we move that there, we can take a good look at those NVMe slots just over here. These are two PCIe-powered NVMe SSD bays, allowing us to utilize SSD caching on this device. What that means in real terms is you populate a device like this with traditional hard drives, uh, which have their own kind of maximum speed. You're looking at around 220 to 230 megs realistically if you're using um, enterprise level 7200 RPM drives. But with SSD caching, you can enable it to be read caching, write caching, or read and write caching, where more frequently accessed files are moved onto the SSDs. And even in smaller doses, those files can be moved over to in for individual read write operations and improve operations overall. And that is how you maximize the speeds of those 10 GBEs and 2.5 GBE um, ports on the rear of this device. However, this device, unlike uh, brands such as QNAP, does not allow you to utilize those NVMEs for raw storage. Acer Store are very much like Synology in that form, in that they're giving you the NVMe SSD bays, but only for caching. You can't take advantage of those slots for raw access, which is a real shame, because if you are arriving with 10 GBE and 2.5 GBE ports with link aggregation as an option, even despite that CPU that I know I keep ragging on, it's worth mentioning that NVMEs can give you up to a potential 3,000 plus megabytes per second read with write coming close to 2,000 with the right SSDs. The idea of having two of those in a RAID 1 and then utilizing the 10 GBE ports on the rear of this would have given some great throughput, even if the CPU may have maxed out during that operation. Still, nevertheless, it is a very well-designed NAS, and definitely, in terms of a 10 bay, they've really kept it tight. They've really kind of kept the 10 bays in there. There's plenty of ventilation there. There's plenty of space for that PSU, and that's why there's that big gaff on the rear of the chassis. They've not gone down the road of utilizing a PCIe slot, using that space and that available power on the controller to be occupied by those NVMe SSD cache bays. And for me, I think that's a damn good choice. Maybe we'll see something slightly different to this when that locker store NAS comes out that arrives with an i3 CPU, as well as a number of the ports that we're already seeing here today and HDMI. So if you, if you want something a bit more graphical or do fancy maxing out over the 2,000-odd uh, megabytes per second read-write level, then maybe look 
at the locker store, but um, uh, the cabinet store. But the locker store 10 today is still a great NAS, and at this price point, is borderline unbeatable at that sub £1,000 limit for this amount of storage and that amount of throughput. But this has been my hardware review of the Locker Store 10 NAS from Acer Store. Do let me know what you think in the comments. Click like if you enjoyed this video. Click subscribe to learn more about this device and we will be doing a software overview of this very soon. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.